afternoon here. We are just outside of Asheville, and yeah, you see cars here on this road. This is one of the first few times that people are able to make their way up this small road, but I really want to bring you here to where we are and show you just the devastation and what was taken from this community. You can see here, mm. this used to be what I'm thinking was a trailer home. You see a lot of cinder blocks here and two trailers here. You may not know that those are two, but those are two that slammed up against each other, not to mention Hello everybody, welcome back to another week with me. Uh, this week is a little bit um, tough to start. It's going to be tough to start and I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet because um, I know myself, I, I will ramble. My heart is completely aching for everyone that I know in Asheville, North Carolina. If you guys didn't know, I moved here f to the west coast from Asheville. I lived there for many years, basically my entire 20s and 30s were spent there and um it's a very special place to me and i have a lot of friends still there and so i've been messaging people and checking in with people and watching their stories to make sure that they're checking in and saying that they're okay i don't have facebook so i'm just this is how i've communicated with everyone back in Asheville. just trying to share resources that i can on social media if anybody doesn't know Asheville, north carolina is like a mountain town it's a very small adorable kind of like portland oregon of the east coast the Appalachian Trail, there's a lot to do in nature. It's beautiful. Lake Lore is one of my most favorite places. I used to think I was gonna get married there. Like I was like, Lake Lore, that's where I'm getting married. All has been wiped. Has It looks like somebody took the city, picked it up and shook it. Not okay. And the friends that I've spoken to that have checked in are like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, but it's bad. Like it's really bad. And I see that and uh, my heart just, it's. I can't like I can't I feel like chest <laughs> tightness and um, my stomach feels really heavy and like full I was saying on Instagram when I, I just shared a post for the Humane Society's fundraiser for the um, animals for the Helene Relief Fund and I was saying on that post that like my stomach feels full of rocks like I just have this weight of worry and I can't make it go away and it's hap it's been here for days and I spoke about it in therapy we're trying to like get me to lighten up a little bit because I can't worrying doesn't fix anything and whining and, and being upset about it doesn't help anybody and um, I just want to make sure that I'm sensitive to what everyone's going through I never could have imagined that that could have happened there so, um, yeah, just, uh, prepare, just be prepared. You know, it's not like you have to sit around worrying about it all the time. Like me, don't take a note from my book. Just be prepared. Come up with a plan with your family, have like stuff on the ready lamps, um, anything that you can use to communicate. I know that like even walkie talkies, two way radios, maybe this I'm saying for like earthquake prone places like the Pacific Northwest, because you know, we've all been aware of that, you know? All right, so we're gonna move on to this week so I don't continue to go off on a tangent, 10 minutes. All right, it's really hard to just like, okay, let's go into a, a weekly vlog, but I wanna just like not, I need something to focus on other than this because I will sit here and dwell on it and keep refreshing the news and keep checking on my Instagram if anybody's responded. I'm just, I'm gonna drive myself crazy. The main thing I wanna do with you guys that's very autumnal, exciting, Halloween-y is we're going thrifting and we're going today. We're going thrifting today. That'll be really good for me too because that's what I do to like relax. Um, so we're gonna go look for stuff for the tablescape. I'm finally gonna be working on that this week. We're gonna do our autumnal little bit of Halloween spooky table setting. I usually do an autumn table, not a Halloween table, and I'll maybe put a couple of like fake spiders or bats on the table. So yeah, I wanna do that. I wanna have, make a little Halloween-y spooky Pinterest-y photo, you know, take a photo table, and uh, that will be one of our fun projects together for thrifting. And then another thing I wanna do when I'm thrifting is look for doilies. I feel like you can always find doilies in the bedding and I want to try to make some doily collars. We'll see. We'll see how this turns out but I want to do a DIY. So that'll be the thrift craft. But today we're going thrifting. That's it for now. <laughs> I need to stop. <laughs> Longest intro ever. Anyway, here's the uh, <laughs> here's the uh, it totally looks like Care Bear 
I, it reminds me of Care Bear. Anyway, but it's super cozy and it's totally not, I can't believe it's not overheating me. That's just wild. And it's actually kind of slimming. I'm, I'm like, okay, working it onesie. Uh, I need to find an outfit though. Anyway, here's the outfit, uh, jean skirt with a harness and the new top, which I really like a lot. And my Marc Jacobs crossbody. Uh, I'm gonna have my smoothie on the road and run a bunch of errands today. So let's get going. I've gotten to actually hear this entire song because I have been lurking this person on TikTok. It showed her like making this song and I, the first time I even heard the hook for it, I was glued. I was like, yes, I want more of this. This song is amazing. And so I started following her and sharing her music. The song is such a bop. I don't know how it's not just gonna, it's gonna blow up. It's gonna blow up. So just watch because like, this is a really small band. I think they're in California. You're looking for a new song and a new band to obsess over that's still indie and super underground and no one has ever heard of them, be one of the first. Okay, well I'm turning here and I'm the first thing I need to do is donate all the stuff in my trunk. successful little thrifty treasure hunt. I found some great stuff for the table. I found everything I was looking for, which is why I love thrifting. I have never, well, that's not true, but it's been a minute since I've gotten this many compliments on my outfit. I got in every place I went. So anyway, um, so for this idea, I want to do a really big branch display. And because I just got rid of so many homeware pieces. I got rid of serving plates I wasn't using and salt pepper shakers I wasn't using. I just donated so much stuff. So I didn't feel guilty at all coming home with one thing as far as like dishware. <laughs> just try not to have too much crap. If I had to bring stuff in, I have to let things go. And this was half off. It was part of the sale. And for the table, I wanted to get the rattan piece that I have on there off. It's been on for the entire duration of summer. I don't really focus on my table too much during the summer, but around this time of year, I get really into decorating that whole area. And a table runner is definitely something that area needs. And look at this scalloped edge. You can use either side, whether you go for the thicker black one or the outline one. It's a lovely oatmeal color. Here's some up close of it a really gorgeous table runner. I love this thing. It's perfect for a Halloween table. I love it so much. It was $3.99. This is so good. This with this and the branches. Are you seeing the vision? And then I have pumpkin galore. Pumpkin things galore. What are the odds? The most perfect Halloween remnant collar piece. Like I can use this fabric. Look, at it. it's got bats and trees and a spooky black and orange one on this side. We've got some really nice wheat in there. There's all sorts of different fabric. Look at all of the different. We'll definitely open this up once I get into it. It's amazing. I could definitely make a cool collar out of that. And then I found one doily, <laughs> one in the entire place, one. But I think I can use this around the edge of the collar. And then this is the final thing. Remember when I said last week that I have given myself the green light on getting more Halloween mugs? I couldn't resist. There was a lot of Halloween mugs there, a lot of pumpkin ones. I already have pumpkin, I already have orange, and they were cheap feeling. I don't really wanna buy things that don't feel like they're a good quality. This is a world market cup, so I know it's really good. Um, you know, it's better quality. I like world market, it has nice stuff, and it's such a great mug. Little skeleton guy new coffee mug to add to the collection. It was $5 and yeah, he's really cool. Look at him. <laughs> Very cool.
All right, let's make these cookies. This is the worst lighting. Some cuddled up Shih Tzus. Cozy. Cozy Coz. <laughs> All of the autumn pillows are out. The pattern for the fabric on the outside, depending on how big these remnants are, let's just open this now. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <gasps> it's spooky bats and trees. That is just some autumn leaves. See, now this one I would be able to do like the collar as the top and then but I don't think I would I don't think I'd make a collar out of that I don't think that's my style this one I really like I really really like that one a lot and there's a lot of it so plenty of fabric I don't know what I would do with that I'm not sure that I love it I just love the way it feels look at that oh, I love that literally like the leaves turning on the trees I mean, what are the odds that I find a bag of remnants of fabric for what I need? It's just weird sometimes how I find things. That's how you know. Like, that's how you know you're in the right place. And then this one, spooky Halloween, black and orange. That, that would be a really cute collar too. But this one is not enough fabric to do a full on, is it? Once I open this door to collar making, if I get good and fast, <sighs> you better look out. Everything I wear will have a collar. <laughs> I'll be going to sleep at night with a nightgown on, a moo moo, and it's gonna have a collar on it. <laughs> Just kidding, but like I love collars so much. Um, okay, now the problem is, is I need to decide what collar I wanna make and go with something that I would more realistic like more realistically wear, which is this one. Like this is more my speed, especially with that situation. I love using things that I have as a pattern, you know, already fits me and I know I like, but I can't find my Peter Pan collar anywhere from the last time that I was called a pilgrim in it. Don't know where it went, but I found a pattern on line. So I think what I should do is just cut this out and just kind of piece it together. So it'll look like that. Okay, I'm thinking this. This would look really nice on the under part of that. And the collar will be double-sided, which I really like that idea. So let's just start cutting this out first. And then it'll have a little, okay, so far so good. And then it'll have a little tie right here. I'm just gonna go do the same thing with this. So far so good on the pattern. I feel like this is a lot better than if I were to just use like a shirt that I have just because I can just keep reusing this and it's all ready to go. Everything is pinned. I tucked the ribbon inside and I'm going to go around the edges and I think I'm gonna leave the center of it open. We, we learn from trial and error and instructions that we don't understand. 
but it makes sense, you know? So I'm gonna start sewing, fingers crossed. All right, oh, okay, all right. It's not bad, it's not bad. Okay, we're looking good, we're looking good. I'm waiting for like something to not look good. Hey. And I went over this like three times to really make sure that's gonna stay because I really want that to be secure. And I wasn't really sure what to do in the corner. That's where I got a little lost. Obviously I'm not done because I still have to sew the center closed, but let's just see what it looks like on. Is it cute though? How'd I do? It's actually really simple. I think if you get the logistics down, it's not really that complicated. Is it cute? Now we're onto something here. <laughs> that was not that hard and such an easy thing to do with remnants or leftover fabric. Let's flip it and see what it looks like the other way. All right, what do you guys think? There's my collar. I just prefer this side over this. And also I realize when you're sewing the collar, if you're doing a ruffle, I should have tucked this like in or something. I, I'm still learning, but I feel like um, because I put the tie on this side, when I flip it, the, the tie doesn't work with the ruffle as well as this side does. So it almost like chose this side, but I, I like it better anyway, so that's okay. And it looks great with my favorite dress. This is my favorite dress. Here it is with my favorite dress. Now that I know how to make collars, I feel like, look out world, <laughs> she's coming for you. All right, all of my crafts are done for the week. We have made cookies, we went thrifting, and now it's all business. I've gotta get ready for a trade show this weekend, so what I need to do is go to like Target, just gonna pop into like their little gift section, see if they have, you know, honestly, the dollar store probably has the little bags that I need. I need a bunch of candy. I just need a lot of stuff. So I'm just gonna go to the dollar store to get a bunch of little baggy thingies and like grab bag stuff on top of the beauty samples that I already have. And then I know that Summer is bringing a bunch of samples as well so that we can fill these little baggies with our business cards. I also have like a bag of keys left over from my wedding I've had forever. And I thought that'd be clever to tie the baggies to the key. I don't know, I think that's cute. So, hi, good morning. Oh my gosh, you guys, I did the thing that I hate that I do. Ah, where I scramble to get out the door. I spent all night preparing for this bridal event today. We're doing, you know, like um, a showcase for brides to find a florist, a makeup artist, a hairstylist. I'm taking my beta blocker. <laughs> but I think the problem I have is that I'm a little bit ADD. And so when I start like doing my makeup, I zone out and I'll usually like watch YouTube or something and I forget that I'm not just like casually hanging out around the house. I'm on a time crunch and, but I'll just zone out and I just start doing my makeup and fiddling with my brows. It's so cute. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And there's a concert or something going on down here. You can hear people celebrating. This is it, gorgeous views. The only thing is that trains do go by here, but it's kind of fun. What is going on down there? It's almost like people are jogging. Is this a marathon? This is the view from here. So there's a little table set up. So pretty. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. That is so cool. So it's like a touch screen? Yeah. Neat. Your aesthetic, it's like a dark theme. Oh, this 
that's being offered. That is so cool, those candelabras. That is awesome. Show your florals. Wow, is this how you make it? I've never heard of this before. What do you call it? It's a sub zero. No, I want to try Hello. That was quite a successful day. That went really, really well. I just got back and changed really quick because we we're about to go back out and meet up with my friend who I did that trade show with and her boyfriend and my husband. So it's the four of us gonna go on a like little, you know, couples dinner outing. I'm finally getting to wear this somewhere. I just wanted to put on something a little more casual. Oh God, where'd you go? Something a little more casual. So just some jeans, you know, and then this thing is really nice and it's just, it's sunny, but it's not cold, but it's not hot. You know that. Because we were working the trade show, all we ate was what was available, which was the vendors who had food, luckily. We were next to the cake guy, so he got tons of cake. Uh, he kept sampling little bits to us, and at the end he ran, he was like, this is, we're running out of time, just take what you want. And we were just like, okay, and took, we got to sample every cake that he offered. And then we had skewers and little bites and ice cream, as you saw, that is such a cool concept, that ice cream. But we both were like, I'm starving. We just snacked pretty much. But it was so good. We, I gave out so many of my samples. I got tons of email addresses so I can send them all my info. Such a great way to network. So if you are somebody who is trying to get any sort of wedding business going, doing these showcases is a really great way to meet brides that are trying to find vendors and just like basically call up the venues and ask if they're having any sort of events like this because a lot of venues do it to promote their venue to a lot of people all at once and they're free to the brides and the grooms but it's like a small fee for the vendors to come in and set up. So it's just also, it's a great way to network with other people in the industry. So we met a lot of people. I gave even the vendors our cards, like if anybody asks for a makeup artist. So hopefully this will get us some business. A lot of people were not even getting married until 2026. They were just kind of putting their feelers out. And with venues around here, they're, book up, they're booking up so fast that you almost do have to plan a couple of years ahead for your venue and your dates, which is just so insane. Try to book everybody as early as you can because so many of those brides had July weddings. I was like, some of these are gonna crisscross over each other because there's only so many weekends in July. <laughs> you have four to choose from. That's how it really puts it into perspective, just how like you have competitors, sure, but there's so many people getting married and they're getting married in that same tiny window of bridal season around here specifically too because of the weather. So I don't feel like I'm competing with other bridal teams and makeup teams because there's just so many out there. So you mainly just wanna find who's right for you. People are going to choose who kind of fit in with their um, personal taste. So I'm not for everybody and I'm okay with that, but I found so many adorable brides. There was this one girl, she's so tall, redhead, pale, like look like Nicole Kidman. She was so beautiful and she was like, I don't know if I'm gonna have a makeup artist because I just feel like I don't really wear makeup. I don't really like the way makeup looks on me and I'm a model so whenever they put my makeup on at the shows, I don't like it. And I was like, well, yeah, we're obviously, we're not gonna do like runway makeup. We're just gonna, I said, you're so beautiful, you don't need makeup. I said, but my specialty is natural enhancements. And that's my specialty. It's just small, beautiful enhancements. So you still look like yourself. You don't feel like you're crazy glammed up and dolled up, but you just look a little bit elevated. You know what I mean? So I had to like sell myself a couple of times to a couple of them that were like, I don't know if I need a makeup artist. I'm like, let's do a trial, see what you think. And if you like it, then we'll know that we know exactly what to do on your big day. But you know, you'll want something just to make it more special. Anyway, you could tell that I've been talking all day. 
because <laughs> I haven't shut off the spigot. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna go rest for a minute and wait for my husband to get home so we can go have some food. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed all of my Halloween decor and my collar making and my cookie making. I had a really fun one with you this week. Please do subscribe if you're not subscribed already and give this a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you on the next video. Bye!